welcome back inside our plane welcome back for the third part of this cmd build day 2022 as you already know as we made with the past areas let's start this area dedicated to open mind with the exclusive overview market coming from nicoletta nicoletta has did before uh, is going to give us all the information about the facility management market so nicoletta it's up to you welcome again on stage tell us everything we need to know about this uh, crucial market welcome back i come back to you to give you some more insights this time in the area of facility management so let's start talking about the uh, facility management uh, uh, scenario we are observing an important but decisive change that, as usual, when talking about digital transformation, does not end with the adoption of a tool or a solution, but involves the entire organization from the inside out. And in this changing, uh, facility management as a new responsibility. Facility management has always been considered a necessary but ancillary activities um, whose added value has often found little recognition and which today finds itself center stage protagonist of a revolution that has to do with the um, rethinking of living and working places from homes uh, to cities from offices to individuals desk in the new post-pandemic era that is unfolding facility management is no longer responsible for changing light bulbs or maintaining lifts but it is an active part of a new culture of collaboration of environmental sustainability information sharing and innovation initiatives the facility manager will increasingly be required to have analytically and statistical skills and the ability to um, translate evidence from data into concrete action that um, benefit the organization processes and, and businesses. This path therefore requires new supporting technologies, particularly those data-driven technologies that enable a better understanding of phenomena and, and, and needs. Uh, within the uh, facility management, uh, the so-called BIM has assumed a decisive role in recent years. Building information modeling, uh, BIM, is the uh, foundation for creating and managing information throughout the process of a building process. It is a model-based based method that allows users to manage building data efficiently and effectively. Architecture, engineering, and uh, uh, construction projects are becoming more complex year on year. While this technology is allowing professionals to work more efficiently and effectively. The industry will continue to, uh, to use BIM, allowing designers, engineers, and contractors to collaborate and uh, coordinate. This coordination provides enhanced uh, insights to project management. It affords a more efficient workflow uh, model, understanding of the life cycle building, and clear schedules, maintenance, and modernization of a past project. And it is precisely here that the uh, building information modeling expresses its potential in the field of property and facility management as an element of governance to have a more effective management of movable and immovable assets. 
Uh, the BIM, the Building Information Modeling Methodology, is based, as you know, on an integrated process of, of um, managing the, the data of a building during its life cycle. So uh, um, looking at the, the BIM from this perspective, we understand that the, the Building Information Modeling optimizes uh, aspects uh, such as maintenance, um, energy, efficiency, accessibility, safety, and so on, improves quality and reduce management cost. Uh, not only the, the, B, uh, the building information model is widely adopted and required at a regulatory, regulatory level sorry, in many European and non-European countries. The basis for any property and facility management is the effective and detailed knowledge of the real estates and movable assets under management. And today, a simple inventory is no longer sufficient. New systems are needed, for example, to uh, georeference the real estate and infrastructure, also taking advantage of of online maps. Uh, for, for Of course, for the life cycle management of building and they, their, um, their assets. Precisely because it is based on an integrated data management process, the uh, building information modeling methodology has said that the marriage of uh, uh, em emphasizing some critical new requirements in the fields of facility management. As you know, any building or construction to maintain over time the level of effic efficiency appropriate to the function for which it is uh, intended needs to be managed and maintained according to accurate and defined facility management processes. This means uh, envisaging already at the design stage maintenance plans for building and facilities and no more generally for movable and immovable assets capable of ensuring adequate uh, uh, level of efficiency to prevent uh, breakdowns that they may cause service interruption. In fact, the introduction of BIM makes it possible to bring uh, into facility management basic information useful for planning, uh, maintenance operation, as well as valuable, uh, valuable data and information for maintaining efficiency uh, choices, for example, on the energy efficiency uh, front. In the background, there is an increased aware, awareness of the importance of a data-driven approach to facility management with uh, objective decision based on, on data. An approach that must uh, then find in technology the right support to have a system that collects, collects data and enables its uh, analysis. For example, a powerful and effective measurement tool, um, for example, of the condition of a, of a plant, uh, from which to develop uh, structural, structural and operational efficiency plan. The data-driven approach involves uh, um, decision-making method that uh, relies on, on the number of data collected to reduce and improve operation and inventions times, minimize the risk of human error and wastage of resources, improve the economic condition of building management, and many other uh, uh, benefit. But that's not all. Data and information are and will increasingly be at the center of facility management decision making also in terms of sustainability. Facility management processes where the focus is on real estate 
are closely related to ESG parameters. Uh, on the other hand, uh, as a strong impact on the sustainability of the planet, the built environment is rightful part of the environmental factor of the ESG paradigm. Facility management, for example, can uh, contribute to orienting the world of building real estate assets and the real estate management toward ESG criteria, achieving two important goals. The optimization of asset energy consumption aimed to reducing CO2 emission through the careful monitoring of energy consumption data in the application of relevant best practice. And second, the intelligent management of assets for uh, the, the improvement of occupants' comfort, well-being, and health with an eye uh, to reducing, of course, the, the waste. One of the evolutionary trends in facility management is its evolution towards the so-called sustainable facility management. Sustainable facility management seeks to ensure that each building has a greatly reduced or even neutral impact on the environment. Generally, this implies several changes in the daily operation, as well as changes to the structure of the building itself. However, it has been shown that sustainable facility management is not just about minimizing the impact of building. Sustainable facility management has repercussion for buildings, people, and organization, a change that can only be sustained through the current choice of technology solution and the most re re reliable partner. And uh, in this regard, I am sure you will have uh, plenty of inspiration to draw on today during the CMD Build Day 2022. Enjoy and thank you. You all know this format and again and again after the exclusive overview market coming from Nicoletta, now it's time to start a restart for a new part of this journey all over Europe and all over uh, the world. Now we are leaving the last part of this CMD Build Day 2022. Now we are going to leave the success story from Gianmarco Azzolin from Axial Fazint. We will talk about open mind, a very smart usage of open mind and so we will talk about uh, facility management and smart maintenance so welcome on board welcome on board in our, inside our plane Gianmarco tell us everything we need to know about this success story with Tecnoteca good morning everyone and uh, welcome to the online presentation for CMD Build Day from Axel Fast International my name is Gianmarco Azzolin and I am a technical employee of the company. Together with my uh, colleague, Mr. Alberto Cerutti, I have been involved in the implementation of the OpenMind software that was uh, developed in AFIX, so an industrial air cooling maintenance software. We have been assisted over the past few months by Mr. Alberto Pittolo, from Technoteca's technical support team, who helped us to customize the software according to our purposes. And I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for his help. So let's start with uh, the company presentation. Axial Fans International is a company founded in 2009 and uh, based in Besnate, Italy. Our manufacturing is based on axial fans for industrial use. Uh, in particular, we focus on uh, solutions for cooling systems, such as uh, cooling towers and air cool condensers, that are used uh, for different purposes in the energy sector. We have also specialized over the past uh, years 
in the production of high efficiency and low noise solutions. In this slide in particular, we can see two different types of models that are currently on the market. On the left side, the small solution that is uh, available for diameters that go from 2 up uh, from 2.6 up to 10 feet. And uh, on the right, we can see the stealth model, which is the specific low noise solution. Our fans are uh, is currently installed in thousands of plants all over the world and uh, operating in critical environments and challenging climates. So they are used uh, in different contexts, such as refineries, petrochemical plants, and electrical power generation industries. Generally, as we can see from this slide, these uh, plants house a large number of fans, which must be constantly monitored and managed remotely so that the most important data can be available at all times from different users. Hence, the need for a software tool that uh, has to be accessible simultaneously by several remote users that can keep track online. This uh, software has to track online all the key characteristics of the plants and the history of the work that is carried out on them. The solution that we found for this problem was the OpenBind uh, data management software. In particular, uh, our choice was uh, dictated by certain key features of uh, the application that I have reported in this slide. So, for example, the fact that uh, uh, it is an application with a lot of uh, features and uh, with a completeness uh, of the data that can be uh, store in it, the possibility of being able to customize the software according to our requirements in a flexible mode, and uh, finally the possibility of being able to adapt it to different contexts of use. As far as the data management uh, section is concerned, a diagram representing the desired generic application structure was uh, initially drawn up. So we can see that at the uppermost level of the hierarchy, there is the building, that is the plant site. Below this, there are the two uh, kind of plants that are generally installed. So the cooling tower and the air cool condenser, as I have already mentioned. Proceeding, proceeding down in the tree diagram, we find the cell, so for both the plants, and the lowest level is occupied by the components uh, that are present in each cell. So, for example, we can see the fan, that is the main part uh, of the plant in this case. So, uh, they, based on this uh, diagram, the relevant cards were developed taking into consideration the attributes already present in the OpenMind library and uh, adapting them for each database component. In the following, a uh, number of cards will be shown as examples according to the customization that was followed. The first card that is shown is the building one, where general data such as the company name and the address uh, where it is located are recorded. Next, going uh, down uh, to the lower level, uh, there is the card relating to the air cool condenser, for example, in this slide, where we can find uh, uh, two different, uh, three different sections general data, the environmental data, such as the classification of the area, and finally the technical data where the number, for example, of the cells and the, the arrangement are stored. The cards relating to the cells contain some important data. In the case of the high cool condenser, for example, the measurements that were carried out during maintenance and replacement of the fans are reported. Thanks to an open mind feature, it is possible to know in a at a glance, 
the status, the current status of the interventions by displaying via checklist the list of cells for which the interventions have already, have already been carried out and on which date, as we can see from the green box. Using another native uh, function of the application, present in the measure summary section, it is, it is then possible to display a graph of measurements in an automatic manner by selecting the asset uh, whose data uh, it is uh, uh, desired to know the about and the type of measurement desired. Choosing, for example, as we can see from this slide, uh, from between the high flow rate of the fan and its absorbed power. It is possible to display so the trend of the measurements along uh, time and see all the measurements that have been performed. Uh, regarding the maintenance uh, uh, management uh, section of the, of the software, it is uh, separated into two other sections. The first one concerns uh, the reporting of the uh, failures that can uh, occur. Uh, in this way, it is possible to report a fault in real time and uh, update all users via an email notification specifying which part of the plant, so which component has suffered the fault and to which asset it belongs. In the case of uh, preventive maintenance, that is the second section of this part, it is possible, for example, to have a calendar, an internal calendar shared by all the users, uh, in which to record the scheduled interventions. So, specifying the type of activity that uh, will be performed and on which asset it will be performed. Uh, moreover, also we can specify the team of technicians who will take care of it and estimated duration of the machine downtime. In such a way, it is always possible in this section to uh, have a, a general view of the activity that are of the activities that are planned to uh, also let uh, the activity start and then at its completion to uh, to make a report of it so it is uh, uh, when the uh, outcome is uh, when the activity is finished Thanks to the open mind, uh, another open mind uh, feature, it is possible to establish a priori a series of activities that must be performed during the intervention through a uh, predefined checklist. In this way, the operator can easily follow the checklist, uh, reporting the values of the measurements, for example, in the white boxes, or placing a flag on the positive or negative outcome of the activity. In this way, reducing the possibility of forgetting something that has to be done. By filling the checklist of the previous slide, then it's possible to print automatically uh, the report of the maintenance intervention and also to add, if needed, some table or graphs uh, by attaching them to it, to the report. And uh, another important characteristic of uh, OpenMind is the possibility of uh, uh, efficiently manage the accesses of the various users who take part uh, in uh, the software through the functionality of the multi-tenant. According uh, uh, to this mode, so, uh, based on the role that the users have, so for example, uh, reading the data, uh, writing, uh, or uh, modify the internal structure of the database. So, by, based on three different uh, uh, roles, it is uh, possible for the users to view one or more customers separately and independently. In this way, uh, we can avoid the overlapping 
inter or interference uh, between different portions of the of the database. In conclusion, uh, this last uh, slide reports some foreseen benefits from our company by using uh, the uh, open mind based uh, software that we have uh, uh, developed. In particular, the uh, first uh, benefit is a uh, secure and valid storage of the master data of the plants, thus being able to have uh, at any time data that is uh, always updated and consistent with the current state of the system. Uh, another uh, benefit is the accessibility of the data by different users uh, located in different parts of the world, avoiding a possible loss of sensitive data and drastically reducing the search times for useful information. Following with the list, we also find the easy identification of spare parts, which are, uh, which are stored in the software and of which it is possible to have every level of detail within the software. The application will be also important aid for the management of the part relating uh, to the maintenance interventions and uh, to the uh, reports uh, that uh, have been that uh, will be uh, given to all users in real time uh, once the failures uh, occur. It will be possible to have a complete control of the data relating to the energy consumption of the system in uh, which our access files are installed, also following, as we have seen from the graph, their temporal evolution. Another advantage will be linked to the reduction of machine downtime, since it will be possible to efficiently program maintenance interventions, so coordinating the availability of the various teams that are related to the maintenance. This will consequently also lead to an increase in availability and reliability of the system. Finally, the last benefit is the improved communication between the maintenance teams due uh, to the possibility of sending uh, the automatic messages and alerts uh, once the failure occurs or once the preventive maintenance activity is uh, as concluded. So, uh, with this uh, last uh, slide, the presentation uh, is. Uh, Concluded, I would like uh, to thank you for uh, your attention and uh, also to uh, enjoy you a uh, co good continuation during the CMD build uh, day. So, best regards from Axel Fans and from Gianmarco Azzurri. After the story of a reality of like uh, Axial Fazint, now it's time for another very important market, in particular in our country, like food and beverage. We will listen to the story, the success story of uh, Andrea Quarta and uh, of, a of a reality like Valsoia. We know everything about this success story. We know everything about the advantages that uh, CND Build, CND Build ready to use and open mind can offer to this uh, very important market for our country. So welcome on stage, Andrea. Tell us all we need to know about this story. Thanks, Marco, for the introduction. I also want to thank Andrea for participating in our event today. I'll start by asking him what his company is, in which sec sector it is located, and what they actually deal with. Thanks to you, hello to everyone. I'm Andrea Quarta, IT Systems Manager at Valsoia. Valsoia is a food and beverage company born in 1990 with a project that was and still is to offer a complete range of plant-based products. We currently produce and distribute various types of these products such as drinks, yogurt, ice creams and frozen foods, condiments, snacks, up to plant-based food supplements. Perfect. Um, perhaps we can continue to understand a little better what was your need that you wanted to satisfy when you started looking for a CMDB and what were the main difficulties you encountered? 
At the time, the intention was basically to give a greater organization to the Information Systems Office. We were in a moment in which the IT structure was growing more and more, therefore the applications were growing, the whole world of infrastructure was also growing, and at the same time all the requests from the company's users were also growing. The problem then was that these requests grew and we did not have an organized flow and therefore the requests themselves took place in the most disparate ways, by email, by telephone, uh, or with people who came and went from the office, post-it notes that we would find attached to the monitors in the morning, or even requests that were made to certain employees in the office who actually dealt with completely different things. So there, there was a lack of an organic way of managing what the information systems activities were. I think it's quite clear what your intention was. Uh, therefore, it would be interesting to understand why you decided to choose CMD Build as the tool to go about overcoming these difficulties. Well, first of all, we actually approached the project in a more organizational way. In the sense, we made an analysis of what basically were the international standards, ITIL as regards of the management of IT processes, and therefore we began to design the workflows of change, incidents, request management. We tried to understand if, as they were designed according, according to international standards, they could somehow be implemented within the reality of Valsoia. This is this because it's clear that we often find ourselves thinking about theory, high side, but we also need to try to graft it into what is a daily life to avoid plastering people's operational activity afterwards. Once this was done, we tried to chisel and modify in a sartorial way what could be the small variations necessary to be able to apply them to our office. And at that point we looked for a tool that could somehow satisfy and gu guide these processes. Doing a market analysis, we found CMD Build, which we liked immediately, <laughs> since it allowed us to have um, a pre-configured version that was basically already done and easily customizable, easily modifiable according to our specificities. So, in all these months in which you have successfully used CMD Build, what do you think are the strong points that you find in the application? We implemented CMD Build in full lockdown, so it was a situation in which almost nobody was in the office, and we, we needed to organize the flows well. From a practical point of view, the fundamental advantage is that the users, first of all, have a clear understanding of the stage of their request. On our side, we somehow manage through the system to have visibility of what our workloads are, depending on the resources of different offices and also have uh, a self-documentation that the system allows us to have, in the sense that having somehow clear the solutions to each ticket and a good documentation related to the resolution, we have two positive effects. First, if the user has a request similar to the one he has already made, he can go and find the ticket that has already been opened to have an immediate self-solution in some way, without even involving us in any way. Second, on our side, instead, we have the possibility of having a common heritage of information that also allows us to be a little more interchangeable when the colleague is possibly absent. So, 
a ticket followed by one person six months earlier can be followed by another person six months later because maybe the ticket is a similar ticket, somehow the documentation and the resolution were explained very well. Furthermore, this allows us to be much more reactive and much faster bringing the solution to subsequent tickets if the cases are similar. This point of view is very interesting. In retrospect, how would you say your company's operations have changed in regards to all these issues that you described earlier. Certainly from the point of view of information systems, we are much more organized, much more structured. Among other things, we've uh, well defined the skills of the various people within the company and therefore also within the company we've created a greater knowledge of what the information systems were and who, within the systems, managed what. In some ways, this was a first strong added value. The ticketing system is really simple, and therefore now all the requests are channeled there. It's clear that initially you need to raise awareness because in any case you will receive the phone call. Come on, answer me. It will just take two minutes to do it on the phone. However, we were good at getting users to use 360 degrees of the system. Do you currently know how approximately how many requests are managed via CMD build daily or weekly? Well, let's say that clearly it depends a little on the periods, but as an indication, I would say that we have about 10 requests a day. It's clear that the requests are divided with respect to the three processes and depending on the processes on which the requests are made, the response times are different because it is clear that if it is an incident, the response must be much faster. If it is a request, the response can somehow have a, a greater reaction time and even more if it is a change. It must be approved in some way and a budgeting process of the change itself must also be managed in some way. You were talking earlier about the fact that the system is currently used a lot in your company, but that in any case there was a need in the initial phase for a little change in the management culture. Do you think that today the people who use the application internally are satisfied with the product and therefore believe that they receive a great benefit from its use compared to what was the somewhat scattered initial system you were talking about? Definitely yes. Basically, individual users have in their CMD build management dashboard the possibility of immediately knowing which are all their open requests, all their open incidents, and they have a greater clarity when their requests and their incidents or changes are being managed and also the resolution times. Therefore, there is a greater clarity of the request process and of the management of the request itself. In the past, uh, an email arrived, a phone call, and the person is doing a thousand other things, and you receive the phone call and you say, yes, I'll look at it right away, and then you put the call down, and then you miss the request that was made to you, and then the user calls after three days and says, oh, I called you three days ago. It's clear that although culture is needed, once this culture is done, having a structural tool gives you added value. Absolutely. Do you happen to remember how the initial approach of the project was managed? Therefore, from the first stages of getting to know the application to customization where it is necessary to adapt to some specific need of yours? Actually, let's say that the previous work was done very well. 
Therefore, the biggest activity was really trying to go and create the skeleton of everything that was the world of services, the world of incidents, the categories, the subcategories, and then to try to have a structure made in a certain way that could be easy to manage on the user side, because the user must be able to find himself in the process of choosing the macro service, the single activity and the specific incident. Then, our other point, having a good subdivision of these categories also allows us to have statistics at the end of the period, statistics of which are the most frequent incidents, the most frequent requests, because then this can lead to implementation improvements or even possibility to training processes in the various areas. Thinking and looking a little to the future right now, are there any ideas on possible future developments, new implementations, integrations to further expand the use of the application? Well, I like to say that CMD Build is a living system in the sense that once we reach the maturity of what was the world of proper management of the relationships between information systems and the business, uh, therefore all the other offices, we began to do a whole series of additional steps that could somehow go to help what was the internal management of the office. So we implemented a whole series of periodic tickets, which are self-generated and that basically serve to remind office resources what they have to do. So, as an example, the fact that every three months we have to manage updates on the clients or updates on the servers, the analysis of the logs on the system administrators, all those things that in some way turn out to be even to be even compliance with what the GDPR world is, and the audits that are made by DPOs. We are also pursuing through the integration that CMD Build allows a better management of what are the asset management of the office and of the entire company. So we have integrated CMD Build with our AirWatch MDM system to go and acquire the whole mobile world within CMD Build and at the same time through the integration with OCS. We have also somehow integrated everything that is the acquisition of data that concerns the specific clients used in the company, therefore desktops or servers. Furthermore, we have taken a further step in the sense that having the possibility of customizing the masks of these assets, we have added the information which obviously does not exist automatically because it cannot be acquired automatically, but which allows us to somehow have in a single point what are for example, the individual free packages linked to mobile phones, to individual devices, to SIM cards associated with the individual device, or the expiry dates for PC maintenance, to have then a situation in which at any time on a periodic basis we can also think about what the expiring PCs are and perhaps even have a revamping plan for those PCs that turn out to be older. Let's say that, summarizing all the various things said during this intervention, we can deduce that the use of the application has been extremely successful for your company and has had a positive response, both in the people who use it and also in operability. I also want to thank you for the precious contribution you've dedicated to us today and for your availability. Thanks to you. After such an important story coming from such an important market, now it's time for the public sector, another very important sector of our country, of our economy. Now it's time for the story of Comunità di Montagna della Carnia, the story of Luca Morocutti. Welcome on board, Luca. Luca, please tell us something about your success story, about your usage of CMD Build, not only for the IT asset management, but also as a, as a service delivery platform. 
please welcome on board Grazie mille. Eh, mi Thank you very much. Let me introduce myself. I'm Alberto Pitolo, Tecnoteca Project Manager, who follows the ongoing activities and projects for the Comunità di Montagna della Carnia, Mountain Community of Carnia, together with Luca Morocuti, who is connected here with us to whom I will now leave the floor and who will describe to you a little about the activities implemented. I'm just giving you a brief introduction. In my opinion, the project is particularly interesting as it conveys in a single application the three main products of our company, the basic CMD build, because it was born in this way, and on this configuration, a whole structuring and custom configuration of dedicated functions for the management of Carnia was made, and then later also integrating part of the CMD build ready-to-use modules for the IT management activities, such as ticketing and help desk, obviously properly adapted to the needs, as well as open maint, therefore the other vertical solution for facility management, to manage maintenance activities and so on, as well as a whole series of interactions with other external systems, also developed independently by the customer himself, for example, FVG page, a sort of Pagopa, Pagopie, quite an interesting feature. Now I won't go any further, I'll leave the floor to Luca, whom I greet and who will explain the details of what we've done together. Yes, hello Alberto, good morning everyone. As Alberto anticipated, I'm Luca Morocuti. I deal with the ICT service of the Carnia Mountain community, which is an institution that provides associated services, services delegated by entities in the public administration, and in particular we follow the ICT part. We have about 30 delegating entities or entities affiliated with us, we have been relying on the management of CMD build for 12, 13 years, starting from the ICT context and then also going on to developing customizations in other areas. In the first versions, our priority requirement was to be able to manage customer assets therefore combining all the functions provided by the CMD build alongside the customizations we requested, including inventory data. Then the functions and integration already provided by ready to use with OCS, therefore the agent that supplies all the machines or all the information that is then downloaded into the repository. As we have continued to rely on CMD build over the years, we have developed further functions. In particular, in addition to the management of assets, from an inventory point of view, we have also introduced specialized workflows that deal with ticketing, therefore the service desk service, which we generally entrust externally and that we need to monitor the functions applied, and also the goodness of the services or the service that is provided by the suppliers who work with us. Therefore, we are able to keep the management of 25 municipalities under control from an IT point of view, both as infrastructures and activities, as I said, of their help desk and service desk. Alongside this, the next step was to make economies of scale, like having an inventory, making turnover proposals to the entities we work with, so that we can predict in advance what the spending budgets could be in the various years, and also by making aggregate tenders thus putting the entities in a position to be able to make volumes and economies of scale on purchases. And this thanks to the reports and information we receive from CMD Build. 
Alberto was referring to the different solutions we started with CMD build in one of its initial versions. So I'm talking about the year 2009-2010. Then the offer of open maint and ready to use joined. We had the need to borrow the functionality of both, and therefore we used portions of one and portions of the other, and in addition, we had custom developments done. In the last two years, we have implemented more information, vertical managements for our offices. This not because there is a lack of some software applications that can manage aspects of this type, but rather to be able to convey the information already residing in the various application domains. So CMD build through all the cooperability systems that it has puts us in a position to be able to receive and manage the information that is already present in other application contexts and reprocess them to be able to make them available to our extent according to our tailoring, therefore not always having to acquire complex application solutions partially usable but we sewed the various options on ourselves. For example, and here I reconnect with the premise that Alberto made on the management of Pagopie payments. We all know that Pagopie is a national platform with which customers must manage transactions of an economic nature. In Friuli Venezia Giulia, there is a platform made available by the region called FVG Pay, which is a platform that acts as an interlocutor between the payment and the national platform. So we needed to manage a scheduler as well as lease agreements and agreements with other entities and monitor the flow of payments in this context. We created all the formulas all the relationships between the various application contexts. We made it possible for the office to place payment notices and monitor collections. So, to our Heritage Bureau was given a tailor-made and fully functional tool with integration on the regional platform. All this all this again thanks to the capacity and flexibility that CMD Build has always guaranteed us for integrations and other applications. We've also carried out for the one-stop shop for productive activities a census and the maintenance of the licenses of the productive activities. This is also useful in the interlocution with the police who contact the office to be able to find out what the various licenses are and the various uses present who carries out the activity. This is information that is part of the one-stop shops activity. We've also developed an integration with the world of geo-referencing, i.e. taking the example of the municipality of Tolmezzo, which has an application available called iSignal City Care, where the citizen user can take photographs via an app for the signaling of maintenance in the area, precisely with a geo-referencing. Through CMD Build, we have created an integration with this application, then triggering the maintenance management workflows. So the maintenance office has this workflow available for management. One aspect that we would also like to complete with CMD Build is that of using apps both for maintenance and for other types of reporting, which we have not yet implemented but is planned, and also for booking assets, not only IT ones but also the company's movable and immovable property. Therefore, the possibility through the website that in 
interoperability will manage the reservations of the various rooms, buildings, cars, or other capital goods of the institution, available precisely to all users who work not only in the institution, but also in all the other municipalities, since what we do can also be reused by other municipalities. These are some of the application areas. I'd like to add that we have found it useful to become more autonomous in managing the platform, therefore by getting trained by Tecnoteca, for the management of all the relationships, classes, tables and events that, that govern the various information. This in order to be immediately productive on the needs that we are able to manage independently. We then further expanded the training activities we have activated notification mechanisms, etc. So, we are increasingly trying to exploit the possibilities that CMD Build makes available. Further developments for us also go in the direction of personal performance management, therefore with objectives, with indicators, KPIs, with the use of dashboards to provide more and more managerial and decision-making tools. This is because information monitoring is fine. We are also trying to increase the decision-making capacity of administrators through summaries, indicators that allow decision-making activities, and the world of personal and human resources will be involved in this aspect. Another interesting area of development, which integrates the various, which integrates with the various financial areas rather than the human resources, also concerns project management. Therefore, the possibility of managing the planning of the institution, not only those in the ICT field, but also those of other services and offices, in such a way as to plan, monitor and detect what is done. This is in order to be able to better govern the projects that the institution sets itself as a goal. The platform itself gives us a large degree of freedom in being able to build our information. But besides this, the important thing is the integration capability, which becomes easy through the interoperability methods that CMD build exposes and that we use regularly. We are lowering the redundancy of information through data synchronization, even if not always in a synchronous way, which allows us to lower operations and to pool the information that already exists within the institution. The context of CMD Build, with its possibility of document management, allows us to use documents that are resident in our document management system, data that also comes from external suppliers rather than from other entities, can be easily transferred from document management to CMD Build, then share documents, PDFs, images and other information. Therefore, the degree of satisfaction is high. CMD build with its ease of consultation and transversal navigation allows us to solve and make information immediately available 
to get to the data immediately rather than making more structured consultations. Going back to the part of the evolution of this institution, institution. There are also other interesting areas for the public administration. One of the interesting aspects is that of the Executive Economic and Financial Management Plan. In the planning documents that the institution has, which are now migrating towards the PIAO, P -I -A -O, i .e. the definition of public value of the interventions that are made in the planning area. The executive management part allows us to go and make a good synthesis of the information that the various offices manage at an economic level, reusing budget data, data that already exists, allowing through CMD Build to be able to insert only the programming and design information. Therefore, also having an integration to that part of the project management that I mentioned earlier, creating relationships between what are the administrative planning, administrative planning documents and what are then the technical documents and activities of technical nature. We begin to relate documents, we do not make summaries as typically happens in small entities using tools such as Excel to make evaluations. Therefore, uniting multiple contexts that deal with the activity, planning and managing institutions projects is one of the objectives that can be progressively achieved with this tool. To this, we can then add the activities related to the digital transition. We have set up an office for the digital transition to which 30 entities adhere, with the person in charge of the digital transaction envisaged in the public administration. Here there are appointments, activities, fulfillments, deadlines, both technical and administrative management of the digital world of public administration. The tool is great to be able to size the information to be managed according to the needs of the office. Alongside the Digital Transaction Office, there are also activities that concern the Personnel Office, for example, information plans, people entering and exiting the various entities, fixed term rather than open-ended contracts, to-do lists. So, this information also arrives from other application domains, such as personnel management or the financial part. It is an excellent aggregation tool, given the flexibility it has from the point of view of interoperability and of evaluation, because the representation of data is very flexible, therefore easily accessible. Therefore, it lends itself to being a great tool for summarizing the activities that take place within the institution. This is the picture of our experience and um, about where we can go. Certainly in the public administration there are areas that can be covered very well with CMD Build. I have finished, so if you don't have other indications. Well, I'll take the floor only to say that it seems to me that you have been more than exhaustive. Indeed, you have given context not only to the of the current situation, but of the past and also the future one, which is certainly very interesting, not only in view of your project, which we are following together, but potentially also the projects of many other companies. Integration and interaction, especially in today's world, is essential. I absolutely agree with what you have said. I think you've given a very close to reality picture. Also making it clear how systems can be integrated, not only of the same family, therefore the product CMD build, ready to use and open maint, but also these three products 
with external systems. This precisely to avoid redundancies, which can cause potential misalignments, but also to have a synergic integrated and coordinated system to manage the various activities and needs of a municipality as of any reality. Yes, consider that the public administration is increasingly involved in a process of technological innovation for which it has technical rules and guidelines to follow. Interoperability is really an expected obligation. It is not just an assessment of a technical or organizational nature. Therefore, the platform being also present on the marketplace of uh, ID Agency for Digital Italy, the area in which it is certified that a platform is adequate for the public administration, is in itself an obligation. Then it happens that organizations don't always have the internal resources to be able to stop for a moment and evaluate data integration. But considering that this institution has set up a service center, our job is also to bring this type of assessment, and we're slowly getting there. So there's a regulatory context, an environmental context, context and there's also an organizational and technical context that follows. Our intention is to go in this direction and work more and more with vendors and players that have this type of solution. I agree, indeed it is very commendable in my opinion, because as you say, many do not have the time, the desire, or do not understand the importance of the thing. Or they do another job. <laughs> exactly. For my part, um, if you've finished, I have nothing more to add than what has already been said. I just have to thank you both for your intervention and for your fruitful collaboration. It's always a pleasure to be able to satisfy requests, especially when these requests are aimed at practical and useful needs. It's also very, very motivating. I thank you. Thank you to you too. Thank you, Luca. We are back in our plane. We are flying toward USA because now it's time to take a break from Italy and, and then to go in the last part of this event. In Italy, we say il dolce sta alla fine in order to say that the last part of an event is the most important one. Now we are in the USA. Now we are going to listen to the story of Barry Lefson from Maximus. Maximus is a large American company that provides services to the American government agencies. And uh, Barry will give us all the details about uh, the usage of CND Build ready to use. Uh, welcome on board. Welcome, Barry. Tell us everything we need to know about your project. Thanks, Marco, for the introduction. I'm now here with Barry. So, first of all, I would like to ask Barry to maybe introduce uh, himself a little bit and tell us uh, something more about himself. Sure. Uh, my name is Barry Liebson, and I work um, on a team called Performance Engineering in a U.S.-based company called Maximus. And I'll give more detail during the talk about what Maximus does. Yeah, that's great. So now that we uh, know a little bit more about yourself, uh, I think that we can start by uh, talking about uh, your company and what it does, uh, and also how your company is taking advantage of the CMD build functionalities. All right, let me start the presentation then. All right. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, I work at Maximus. This talk is about um, how we're using CMD build at Maximus. And you can see a little information about me. I'm, I'm called an IT lead engineer. Um, uh, and uh, as I said before, my team is called performance engineering. Let's see if I can figure out how to advance the slides here. All right. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so um, Maximus, um, this is the, this is the, I'm sorry, this is the agenda that I'll run through. And it's what does Maximus do and for whom? I'll mention a little bit more about what my team does and how I fit in. Um, what is ONDB, which you'll discover is the sort of how, how we branded, what we call our CMD build implementation and how we arrived at, um, you know, we, we shopped for software to, um, to be our OMDB and CMD build ready to use was our choice. And um, the ways that we use CMD build that might be a little different than how other people use it. That sounds great. So, um, so Maximus is a pretty large company, thousands and thousands of thousands of employees scattered. Um, across the US and also in some other countries now. Dozens and dozens of offices. Um, typically, we have an office in every state capital in the US. And our headquarters is outside of the US capital, Washington, DC. And that's not a coincidence. It's the reason our offices are there is that we do work with governments. Um, most of our contracts are at the state level and we do have uh, also quite a few federal contracts. And, uh, and yeah, we're now spreading out to other countries. We've, we're a little bit in UK and Europe, Canada, um, the Middle East. Um, and that's a, a goal of the company is to become more international in focus. Do you already Currently, have some other countries uh, into which you're planning to expand? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know which ones are next. Um, I just, yeah, I really don't know what the next ones on the list are. But um, for example, pretty recently, we opened an office in um, Saudi Arabia, to give you an example. Mm -hmm. um, most of the work that Maximus does falls into one of two areas, health, and, uh, and the other is what's called human resources. I don't know if that's what other, whether it's called in other places, but, um, you know, personnel. And, uh, an example of work that we've done in the health arena is uh, with the recent pan COVID-19 pandemic, um, Maximus was involved in working with the Biden administration to put together a unified response. Um, so that program involved, you know, setting up call centers for people who had questions about where they could get vaccinated or where they could get tests um, and putting up informational websites. And that's kind of typical of what Maximus does. We operate a lot of call centers um, where people can get their health questions or other questions related to government programs answered. And we also provide self-service um, web-based solutions and other websites that provide information to people. Um, so my team is called Performance Engineering. As I mentioned, it's part of Maximus IT. Maximus IT is a quite large organization within Maximus. Um, and my team um, collects IT data um, basically, we're in the data business. Um, we collect all that data for a couple of reasons. We're, um, we're working with people in operations to make sure that they've got the information they need to, for example, troubleshoot 
problems. Um, you know, if a server goes belly up, they need to know that and they need to know where it is, how to find it, how to, how to uh, fix that problem. Um, so they're one audience. Um, another audience for all of this data are, are leaders and decision makers who um, need to know where things stand in order to make intelligent decisions about where to take things. So um, I put down one example here that um, we, you know, we're trying to chase down all the ancient servers because um, there are thousands and thousands of servers across Maximus. Some of them are now running obsolete operating systems and we're helping the company identify those servers so that they can prioritize, prioritize upgrades. So among the software packages that my team uses are Splunk. Many of you are probably familiar with Splunk. SolarWinds, um, which unfortunately got a black eye a year or two ago because they were involved in a pretty bad um, security breach you may have read about. AppDynamics, and of course, CMD build ready to use. And uh, as a member of that team, my days are very different, but, but generally I'm enhancing um, or um, administering our CMD build site. And I'm also moving data from system to system, um, transforming it as I go very often. Okay, so what is OMDB? So OMDB is an acronym for Operations Management Database, which is a name my old boss's boss came up with. Um, you can think of it as a, a subset of what you find in a CMD, CMDB. Um, and the idea of OMDB, it, it, it was, uh, designed to replace an earlier homegrown system that we had that um, collected data mainly on behalf of application administrators um, and to some extent our NOC. Um, and that database was just um, was limited to uh, servers and what applications they were running and for what project. So we went shopping for a replacement for this homegrown system. And uh, we thought, well, since OMDB is a subset of, of CMDB, it made sense to look at CMDB solutions. And um, because we couldn't start designing from scratch, you know, we had, we had to maintain the functionality that the homegrown system displayed. We had, to, we had to cover that, start with that as our baseline. So one of the things we needed out of this solution was that it had to be customizable so that we, could, uh, we wouldn't lose anything in the transition. And because we expected to use um, autom automation, to move data in and out of the system, we needed a system that made that kind of data exchange straightforward. And uh, also because we expected people with um, various roles within Maximus to come into the system and um, augment the data that we collected automatically and to form relationships among the data. We needed a good user interface and a sophisticated access control system. And we didn't have a, a huge budget. So with those criteria in mind, um, we landed on CMD build. We felt it easily met all of these criteria. And we very much like the techno tech of people we met while we were evaluating it. Um, the only thing that we misunderstood during our evaluation 
was that connectors were the sole way to move data in and out. And that's just because we didn't understand the system well enough. And I'll be covering that in a bit. So here's some things that might be a little different about our implementation. Um, as I mentioned before, a lot of the data arrives via automated processes. Uh, the vast majority of the data in our implementation in what we call OMDB arrives that way. Um, we've defined a lot of our own classes modeled on what we found there and we've augmented many of the classes that come pre-packaged and we've really grown to appreciate um, the, the way CMD build implemented classes particularly the the way the hierarchy work or the you know the way in classes can be subsets of other classes or use inheritance and we take advantage of that a lot um, we don't use a whole lot of wonderful um, technology built into CMDB ready to use because we're not doing a full CMDB. You know, we have, and, and that's, it's not because CMD build doesn't offer good solutions in those areas. It's just that our company uses other products for all of that stuff, you know, incident management and request fulfillment, change management, all those kinds of modules. We have other products doing those functions. So, so we didn't need to call on CMD build for that. And one thing that's kind of interesting is that our field services team has built their own applic. It's kind of interesting. Um, they built their own application, which is built on a, um, uh, some kind of uh, .NET framework that basically treats ONDB as its data store. So it's just, it's pushing, pulling data out of OMDB and pushing it back in. So when we started down the road of implementing, um, we were under the impression, as I mentioned before, that we needed to build connectors if we were going to pull data in. And But what we discovered in working with the, the technical people at Technoteca is that uh, the connectors um, are, and, and Gratian, you can, if I get this wrong, please step in, but the, the connectors are built using um, Java, I think very often Groovy, um, in the Groovy programming language, and to, to, to a large extent are single purpose. So you build a connector to pull data from one place and to push it into one place in CMD build. Yeah, well, I think that the whole concept of the connectors has kind of shifted in the last year or so, I would say. Uh, from version 3.4 and, and forward. And uh, connectors uh, are not exactly as they used to be one oh, uh, years ago. And now it's a lot easier to implement them uh, inside the CMD build application using the service bus functionality. Okay, so we may want to take another look at them then. But yeah, what we, but, yeah. but what we discovered was this wonderful import export mechanism. And, you know, it so happens that, that, you know, I'm a scripter, so I, I write um, in bash and Python primarily doesn't really matter. But um, what I discovered was I could write a script that um, used an API call to some other system and pull that data, parse it for what I'm interested in and write out a CSV and then use that uh, import export mechanism in CMD build to pull the data in, you know, and there's a lot of intelligence in that mechanism, you know, good merge options and things like that, which saved me work as a programmer. So that became our go-to solution. So we have now, um, yeah, I think I counted, we have about 75 
scheduled imports now that run generally daily at night, mm -hmm. refreshing all the data in in our CMD build, build implementation. And do you have an idea of uh, how many records are we talking about daily here? How many records get uh, pulled into CMD build daily? It's a, it's a, I can give you an idea, I think, for example, one of the, th so we were, we use AWS um, for most of our uh, servers and serverless. Most of our tech stack is now in AWS, a little bit Azure and uh, still some on-premise stuff, but um, ev all that AWS, so each night, I refresh the list of EC2s and RDSs um, and load balancers. So for example, we have about 5,000 EC2s, about 800 RDSs. Those are just some numbers I know off the top of my head. All of that data is getting refreshed every night. Um, and in that case, it gets completely synchronized. You know, sometimes I'm merging and sometimes I'm synchronizing. Um, so, oh, and then, and that doesn't count. Um, we have thousands of, we basically keep an IP registry. That's uh, tens of thousands. So yeah, it's a lot of data. Yeah, it's a lot of data that gets, gets synchronized every, pulled in every night. And uh, just drew some pictures, but um, this just sort of says the same thing that, you know, I'm pulling stuff using an API and then um, turning it into a CSV um, and using that import export mechanism. I also thought I would count the number of scripts that I've written. I have, I have all these scripts on my, we, we actually have a pair of, um, of um, CMD build servers behind a load balancer. Um, and actually, I should talk about this node a little bit. But uh, yeah, I run a couple hundred scripts. I've written a couple of hundred custom scripts now that implement all of this stuff. And one thing that I noticed noted down here that confused us at first, um, um, since we have two backend servers, um, we had a problem where the task manager, um, if, oh, and I'm, I'm synchronizing the files from my master server to my slave server. So I have an rsync running and it, it every 15 minutes or so, anything on the file system anything I care about on the file system from the master goes to the slave. And I had this issue where um, the task manager was confused by the fact that I had two different um, directories that it might be pulling its jobs from. So and I, I hope this makes sense. I solved that by setting up a little NFS server on the master and then sharing that directory to the slave so that it's actually the same directory that they're pulling from and that solved that issue and i think that's all i have any anything any questions gratian was that clear yeah, from my side, I think it was pretty clear. Uh, one question I would have for you is maybe if, uh, if you have any final considerations, maybe if you'd like to tell us what are the strongest points in your opinion concerning CMD build and uh, mm. uh, some maybe experiences and some things that you've learned that might be useful for others. Yeah, as I, um, as I mentioned, um, the, um, the, the implementation of classes is just wonderful and easy to extend. And I, I would say that's one of the strong suits of CMD build, particularly the way we use it. As I say, we're only using a subset of the functionality. So I'm not even a, in a position to 
appreciate a lot, a lot of what's in CMD build. But for what we use it for, which is primarily inventory, basically, um, the class hierarchy system is fabulous. And of course, since I spent so much time on it, you know that I really love the import export system and we exploit that very well. So I'd say those two things, you know, the, um, the one thing that I'll say about the classes is that you, you do need to put some thought into um, how you set up the hierarchy. That's probably obvious to people, but there are, there are some dead ends that you can find yourself in if you make a poor decision early on you may be stuck with it for a while. So it, it, it's worth it to step back and really think about your data model before you begin building those classes out. Yeah, for sure. I would also uh, agree on the fact that maybe uh, uh, at least a thorough analysis is always best at the beginning. So mm -hmm. this usually saves a lot of time afterwards. <laughs> Since uh, when you have a fresh, uh, let's say, environment, it's easier to make changes than when you have to make changes after you have a whole system built around the uh, classes and a uh, specific data model. That's right. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to so, thank you. I wanted to thank you for inviting me. It was my pleasure to present. And uh, yeah, thank you as well. And uh, on behalf of the whole team of Technoteca, uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. And so thank you very much for the time you've given us today. Uh, I hope you had fun. <laughs> and uh, we'll, of course, talk to each other also on other occasions. Sure. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. You too. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. So we remain in the USA for the last story of this great day, of this uh, great journey, of this uh, great 2022 edition of CND Build Day. We remain in the USA for a recorded video coming from uh, Margot Knight and Jess Davis from Schneider Electric. They couldn't be with us live, but they recorded an exclusive video in order to say, to tell us everything we need to know about the usage of Open Mind and the application of the software for the capital asset planning. Hi, I'm Margot Knight a business analyst for Schneider Electric, supporting our configuration of OpenMate. And I'm here today with Jess Davis, Client Services South Region Manager, who assists our clients in obtaining insights from the tool. We're with Schneider Electric Sustainability Business, and we have a configuration of OpenMate which is branded as Capital Asset Planning, or CAP. This tool provides our sustainability business clients with actionable insights on significant asset expenditures. Our configuration and use of the tool is constantly evolving. As an example, we're currently vetting an initial configuration of the mobile application, and the use of this feature by our internal field data collection team shows early promise for improving efficiency and streamlining our data collection process. This is just one example of our ongoing adoption of new features and configurations within OpenMate. The use of this tool and the understanding of its outputs is heavily facilitated by the client services team. And so I'm going to pass the mic to Jess, who will share more detail on the ways in which our configuration of OpenMeet provides value to our clients. Thank you so much. Hi. As Margot mentioned, I'm Jess Davis with our client services group. And capital asset planning, the OpenMate configuration that we're utilizing, is honestly one of the most exciting things to happen inside of our business in the 14 years that I've been here. This is completely changing the nature of our conversations with our clients. Historically, our approach has been centered around mechanical equipment, energy savings, guarantee management, and building automation. Uh, but this has allowed us to focus more on the entire financial picture for our clients and focusing on the things that need to be addressed today, the things that are coming up in the near term, and helping us avoid budgetary surprises 10 years down the road. Capital asset planning is not simply a software solution for our clients. What makes it a differentiator for our business is that it is a completely managed solution where we are partnering with our clients to analyze their data, bring things to their attention, 
all thanks to the ease of access to the information utilizing the, the OpenMate platform. Uh, the, the extensive level that we can filter and customize the information makes it very, very easy for us to drill down into the information that's important to us and important to our clients. But most importantly, it's a starting place for many of our clients to move into a territory of a centralized database of information. Many, many of our clients have long been in a situation where all of this information lives inside of one person's head or in a variety of different spreadsheets. And by consolidating that all, all of that information into a cloud-based database like this, just makes that information so much more accessible. And the fact that it's managed means there is actual decisions being made on this data. It's not just sitting stale inside of a software platform. So why is this initiative so impactful for our clients? One reason is that it was built entirely in response to our clients' requests. We meet with our clients all over the nation on a regular basis to talk about their savings performance, talk about their project performance, but also try to unpack what other challenges they're facing. And many of our clients were coming to us with challenges of feeling, feeling like they're running to fail, feeling like they're only being reactive to uh, the needs in their buildings as opposed to focusing on what's coming down uh, the pipe in the future. And so they, because of that, they have a poor understanding of their overall asset age and what needs to be budgeted from year to year. Many times those, those budget planning sessions turn into taking previous year's financial picture and adding a certain level of percentage on top of that. And due to that nature and the fact that so many of these replacements of pieces of equipment are happening retroactively or reactively rather, it's, it puts them in risk of having equipment fail in, in a scenario where they're not prepared to uh, respond with budget that's necessary to replace it. Or, especially in, in the current time that we're in with uh, equipment delays, uh, it could be months before they can get an effective solution in place in response to a failure. But one additional challenge that this platform is helping us to solve is the ability to analyze the maintenance practices and spend against pieces of equipment that we're tracking inside of the database. Not just what the replacement cost is, but the, the ongoing cost for keeping pieces of equipment alive, which could translate into pieces of equipment being pulled forward in the replacement process uh, to avoid future costs just keeping it functioning. We have a section of capital asset planning that is that we refer to as the deferred maintenance dashboard that helps us visualize the complete financial picture for our clients and look at dollar values that are expected in uh, the current year, the next year, what things have been deferred that should have been replaced already and still need to be on the radar, but also helps us look further ahead. And then we can utilize some of the filtering capabilities to drill down into the data distribution and really understand uh, how the data is being made up and how it is uh, compiling into the complete road, uh, budgetary roadmap that we're looking at here. Now, one big initiative, an example of what we're utilizing this data for for one of our biggest clients is helping them standardize on the types of equipment they have in their facilities. Um, by, by creating more standardization and instead of having many, many different types of manufacturers across their properties, they can reduce the amount of uh, re replacement parts they need to have on hand, which can reduce storage costs, uh, but also enables them to potentially drive cost savings through bulk purchasing of specific pieces of equipment that they could need. Now, this also helps us to uh, analyze the data, analyze the service tickets that are going against particular equipments to help our clients uh, optimize their, their uh, operating and maintenance costs, the things that they're doing as part of their preventative maintenance uh, schedules, and how we could potentially optimize those things to 
potentially limit the the additional effort that goes into a piece of equipment that's about to be replaced or allocate additional O&M time towards specific, specific pieces of equipment in order to drive extended lifespan. This is a real world example of how we're utilizing the platform to make data driven decisions with our clients, not for our clients, but in complete collaboration with our clients. I mentioned previously that we're undergoing a standardization effort. The biggest focus right now for that is on their food and beverage uh, services teams and analyzing the kitchen equipment that is across all of their uh, nationwide properties. And so we've got hundreds of different types of kitchen equipment stored inside of the platform, but to get the ball rolling, we've focused on four key types that were seen as the biggest low hanging fruit to begin implementing standard. And so we met as a team, analyzed the, the data, analyzed the distribution of information and made that decision. We then customized the data set so we could determine the best actionable views. And we did so utilizing the, the custom view creation capabilities of the platform. We sorted things in a very specific manner to be able to analyze equipment types, analyze manufacturers, analyze model numbers that were inside of the, the database to drill down on exactly what the complete picture was and how we could make educated decisions on that. Then, once we provided that data set to the decision makers, the, ma the one in this scenario was the executive chef. Uh, he went through the data and prioritized what his preferred model number would be for the, uh, for the specific kitchen types so that that could be determined as the standard. And then we actually had the representatives from those different manufacturers walk with the executive chef through the properties to determine what are the current model numbers of their existing equipment that we could still utilize the same space allocation uh, to move forward as standard and not have to go through re-permitting processes and generate some cost savings through that. Based on those walks and those discussions, we're able to customize an RFP that is actually about to go out uh, to start to secure actual purchasing through a competitive procurement process that will allow us to generate cost savings and, and determine preferred pricing on some of these equipment through bulk ordering. And so this is a real thing that is happening with us and our client. And this is as recent as the last month. And what's awesome is we can go from data collected, data being in the platform, to decisions making and actually purchasing things in that short of a time span. And that's all because of the data being so easily at our, available at our fingertips. I hope you can tell that we're extremely excited about this platform and how it's changing the face of our business. This is a solution that has a, a significant amount of growth potential and is creating a significant impact on our client conversations today and will have an even greater impact in the future as it continues to expand and grow with new features and new knowledge within our, our team of how to leverage the platform. Uh, so couldn't be more excited about it. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for the partnership so far. As you all know, these were exclusive stories, success stories of great collaboration with Technoteca coming from all over the world. We have been in Netherlands, in Germany, in USA. We have been traveling all over this CMD Build day. And this is the last part, the end of this great journey. We are landing in Italy, in Infinity Area. And uh, for me, it was a very big pleasure for me being with you inside the, this great space. I thank you all for being with us. I thank uh, a lot. Thanks a lot, Fabio, Luisa, all the team of Technotech, and in particular, Silvia Beda, for the great support. It was a, a very big pleasure for me being inside this great event. See you next time. Now, now, as you know, you are free 
to ask any kind of question, to interact with us with the Q&A session. You all know now the Technoteca team at your complete disposal. The guys are managing our, in our platform. So please feel free to ask any kind of information about CND Build, CND Build ready to use and open mind. Thank you again. See you next time. See you for the next great journey.